Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for the opportunity to, to present my work here. Uh, so I'm, I'm covering the upper and lower GI tract today. I am a, a foregut surgeon, so uh, bear with me on the colonic volvulus stuff. Uh, I'm a consultant for Stryker as my disclosure. Start with gastric volvulus. Uh, there's a couple ways it can happen, primarily uh, in kind of elderly patients with uh, ligamentous um, laxity that can allow the stomach to twist on itself, but more commonly we see it in secondary, usually parasophageal hernias, big parasophageal hernias with, uh, or diaphragmatic hernias with stomach in the chest. Uh, you have a couple planes on which you can rotate, either the organoaxial plane or the mesenteroaxial plane, uh, or you can have a combined. This uh, clinical presentation varies depending on degree of gastric outlet obstruction, uh, and you have acute and chronic and acute on chronic. We'll focus mostly on the acute phases here today, given this acute care surgery uh, discussion, and that's kind of where we see these patients, uh, elderly patients, come in through the ER with an ability to uh, swallow and have abdominal pain and chest pain. <laughs> So uh, both charts triad, pain, vomiting, and inability to pass the NG tube. And that's up to 70% of our patients. So that's the acute phase. And chronic, we kind of see more in the, the clinic. So we'll talk more of the acute. Patients will come in, start work up by the ED, which usually be a plain x-ray. Uh, and you can have, you'll see the, the stomach bubble uh, in a horizontal plane for the organoaxial <clears throat> and a spherical type of bubble for mesenteroaxial. Um, usually they're not getting contrast in the ER, right? But it gives you a good example of what it looks like. And, but most of these patients are getting a CT scan, um, and you should be getting a CT scan looking for signs that would send you straight to the operating room. So free air perforation, pneumatosis, ischemia. Uh, often we'll see these big stomachs in the chest, and you're looking for pneumatosis or any signs of perforation uh, and patient instability that would send you to the OR. So the treatment is first resuscitation, IV fluids, uh, be careful in the elderly patients with heart failure, uh, just be gentle, rehydration, electrolyte, uh, abnormality correction. Start them on broad spectrum antibiotics if you're concerned for gastric perforation or ischemia. Uh, and in the uncontrolled sepsis or unstable patient, when you're during, doing this resuscitation, you gotta go to the OR. But in many of these, we can start with decompression, plus or minus detorsion, that's NG tube. And what we care about here today is, is endoscopy. And we'll talk briefly about definitive repair in a, in a bit. So the when, where, how. And for these volvulus, the gastric volvulus patients, um, I recommend general anesthesia, airway protection. These people are coming in vomiting, gastric outlet obstruction. So either in your endo suite or OR, but, but with breathing tube in place. And endoscopy is a temporizing measure. Um, this is really to get you to the point where you can do definitive therapy. And it may also be the only way the NG tube can successfully be placed. So when you're doing the endoscopy, I'll talk next about the alpha loop maneuver. But your key really is find the antrum, find the duo. If you can get there, then you can often, you often see the stomach detorse itself uh, without too many uh, difficult maneuvers. You may need a pediatric scope and be prepared to, you know, if the, once you start retroflexing, you can kind of push against that greater curve of the stomach, can push it out of the chest a little bit. Um, and basically, I don't have any good videos of this because when this happens, it's usually off hours and we don't have uh, the capabilities of taking videos, but you'll end up with tight holes that you gotta get through and then once it, you feel it detorse, you'll come back and it just looks kind of like a normal stomach and expect a little more pressure than a normal endoscopy as you're kind of doing these maneuvers. So the alpha loop, and this is a, a great paper by Dr. Ujiki, um, you pass the scope through the volvulus, again, find the antrum, find the duodenum, you withdraw from that spot once you've got the anatomy identified, readvance after forming your loop through that volvulized portion, and then as you uh, pull back the scope and torque clockwise, it uncoils the loop and uncoils the stomach. And at the, that time, you can also place an NG tube, allow for decompression, and it gives you some time to, to think and react. Uh, so this is a uh, um, great diagram from that paper. What we're really worried about here, so if, if you've got any evidence of ischemia, uncontrolled sepsis, you're going to the OR. 
But the, a lot of patients we can get through these temporizing measures. You start with urgent upper endoscopy and reduction in place of um, NG tube. If they're um, very elderly, uh, not good surgical candidates, you consider PEG or gastropexy. But uh, the overall goal is to reduction, reduction of the stomach, uh, resect portions if needed. If it's a parasophageal hernia, fix that parasophageal hernia. Um, and then you can use potentially advanced endoscopic and laparoscopic uh, combination procedure to try to fix the stomach in, in the correct location. Just to reiterate, restore normal anatomy. So if it's a primary gastric volvulus, gastropexy, peg tubes uh, are good options. You want to do two peg tubes, one uh, distal and one proximal, so it doesn't twist on the peg axis. If, you're, if you have a parasophageal hernia, that's usually all, all you need to do is repair that parasophageal hernia. Um, and to prevent recurrence, you do some gastric fixation or repair that hernia. And nutrition if, uh, if it's needed. So gastropexy would be along the greater curve to the abdominal wall. You can do that in, in elderly sick patients and, and primary voluous patients. Um, and you can do, for really high risk, you talk about the PEG tube um, as a resource to do a, a proximal and distal PEG, one in the gastric body, one in the distal stomach, um, so the stomach can't rotate around it. And a secondary volvulus, we recommend laparoscopic or robotic approach. Won't touch too much on this, just because we're focused on endoscopy here today. Again, just remember your, your diagram here as you're going through uh, with these patients. Excellent resource. Moving on to colonic volvulus. Uh, it was mentioned a couple times uh, previously, so we'll talk sigmoid and sequel. Uh, sigmoid is really where the endoscopy is going to play a role. Long redundant colon. Uh, with chronic fecal overloading and dysmotility may also contribute. And uh, sequel volvulus is um, less we don't usually use endoscopy for this, it's more a surgical uh, problem, but we'll talk about that very briefly. So sigmoid volvulus, you can get this whorl pattern and absence of rectal gas, and you get a split wall sign on your CT scan here. Or in abdominal x-rays, you got the bent inner tube that you've seen a couple picture uh, pictures of already. So when, where, why, we'll get to again. So perforation or peritonitis, those alarm signs, that goes to the OR. Um, it's kind of stuck there. But if you've got no perforation, no peritonitis, you can do endoscopic detorsion with surgery uh, at that index admission. And if you fail at, at reducing, then you got to go to the operating room. This is high recurrence risk, so generally these patients are getting some sort of an operation at admission. So when the patient's stable, non-perforated, you can do endoscopy under moderate sedation or general anesthesia, but uh, ideally in the GI suite uh, or in the operating room. Again, this is a temporizing measure. It gives you time uh, to be more thoughtful and do a better operation. Um, but it, it really helps to not, you know, have to rush them to the OR and, and be stuck with a uh, Hartman so you could potentially do a, a more, um, a re better resection with anastomosis. Uh, so what you do for the, the scope itself is advance the SIG scope or C scope under direct vision into the rectum. You insufflate to find the apex of that volvulus. It'll kind of tighten down into an apex, have whirling mucosa. Uh, pressure from the air may detorse uh, automatically and be prepared for a big gush of air and fluid coming at you. Um, if it doesn't, then you find that spiraling mucosa and just keep applying gentle pressure at that apex insufflation until you uh, achieve detorsion. At that point, you can uh, insert a rectal tube under direct view. You pull the scope out and take a, um, a snare with a, a drain or whatever that you um, put side by side with your endoscope and push up into the colon. Buys you some time so you can do a bowel prep and get that patient to the operating room in a few days. And then you've got sequel volvulus. It can volvulize also across multiple planes. This is uh, high risk for failure with endoscopy and high risk for perforation. Uh, it's diagnosed as um, the whorl sign here on CT scan usually. Uh, and you can also see it as like a sequel bascule. And the when, where, why of endoscopy is generally the answer is no. Uh, treatment here is surgical. This is from a recent case at UCSD where you're not going to be able to, to decompress that so, so far into the colon within an unprepped colon and giant cecum. So um, depending on bowel compromise, you can 
perform colectomy versus uh, cecopexy, uh, but we won't get into the details of that other than to say endoscopy doesn't really have a role in the cecal volvulus, has a big role in the sigmoid. Appreciate your time. Happy to take any questions.